start with the skirmish here, it's it's a pretty standard game, as you can see everything is sort of in the middle, so we do have some weather events, a sort of mixed type of terrain between plains and mountains, uh, mixed sort of in the middle starting political points, that's the main currency, and there are random events and elections coming on, and we are playing for overall 60 turns. And that will be the uh, victory condition. So. Let's start out. Um, if you want to paste this, then uh, you can uh, pause the uh, screen and uh, wait there. Equally with the terrain scene, let's uh, see what we get. And uh, I'll talk about the game and how we set up our um, turn then. So, this is the oval map. Um, let's get this away for a second. And you can see that in right here we have a US headquarter. This is our main base and sort of around that you can see that there's a big highway running around, uh, running across our stretch of Afghanistan here and there are several uh, Afghan little villages uh, scattered around the map. Let's see, the closest uh, one to us is probably Narva here, um, but there are quite a number of them actually. So, as I said, um, the game is about winning the hearts and minds. Um, right now we have the hearts and minds meet up 50 and we will win the game if uh, we end the game after 60 turns above 50 points of hearts and minds. You increase hearts and minds uh, mainly by visiting uh, these little villages uh, with your soldiers making sure everything is alright, demonstrating that you can actually provide security, um, speaking with the village elders uh, and that uh, sort of thing. You can also um, connect these villages to the highway. Um, this is the highway here and you can actually see that as this uh, village here has a highway connection already as indicated by uh, this little sign here. Um, let's see if we can find a village without a highway connection right over here. Um, this village will probably never get a highway connection because it's um, well deep down in some valley and, and you can't actually build roads across the mountains. Um, but you know, maybe Look, probably these guys not either, but these could, for example, potentially uh, be connected to the highway. You can also kill enemies um, in close vicinities, clear mines. Um, all these sort of actions will increase the hearts and minds. Of course, the hearts and minds uh, can also decrease if, uh, for example, the Taliban or some local militia uh, visits uh, the villages, intimidates the people there, uh, and generally just questions your authority or if you actually lose combat uh, rather close to one of these villages. The other important bit um, of the game is the in-game currency, so political points. That reflects how much um, support your troops have from back home and, and how much uh, units uh, you can buy, how easily you can move them around, how many structures you can build, um, and so on and so forth. And the big second aspect besides uh, winning the hearts and minds uh, of, of the African people will actually be logistics. So moving around the map, um, trying to actually visit these villages will all consume fuel, it will consume rations and it's important to uh, get these things going. There are two types of um, enemies. Uh, one will be the Taliban itself. They have been stronger than uh, the others which are militias. Taliban uh, spawn from the eastern side uh, of the map, so from over here. Uh, basically they come in from the border of Pakistan and have uh, different missions that they will uh, try to fulfill and, and try to get to that point uh, where they do that. For example, they uh, might create an ambush position on, on this bridge here, so they would come just across from here and, and settle there. They might also try to get to one of these villages, so then they need to take all this uh, hike across but they could potentially do that. The other enemy that is in the game are local militias. They are not strictly Taliban, but more sort of the local warlords um, that you might see. And they randomly spawn from uh, caves in these mountains. We don't know the exact uh, spawn locations, um, but there will probably be around 8 spawn locations across the map. And we can try to um, identify where these guys are coming from uh, once we get a bit more intelligence, once we see, um, have actually uh, had a couple of fights with these guys basically. So let's um, take stock of the situation and, and have a look at the map here. Um, as we saw already, these 
three villages down here uh, will pose a bit of a challenge because there is no way to build a, a road across these uh, mountains. So these guys will um, probably forever be rather isolated and we'll only be able ever to visit them uh, by a helicopter. That's not necessarily um, a bad thing. Helicopter transport is does have quite a couple of advantages. It's it's very fast, it's independent of IEDs, um, so improvised explosive devices, I think, so uh, basically mines um, that um, can be on the roads. So helicopter transport is rather effective, however it's not very efficient. It's, it's rather expensive because it costs uh, a lot of political points. You can actually see that um, over here. So uh, we, we'll talk about each of these units a bit later on, but you can see that the political movement uh, costs for one of these helicopters is, is three per point, where the normal um, sort of truck would only cost one uh, political power point, or main currency, to move around. So it's, it's quite a bit more expensive um, to do that, but for down here we'll not have a different chance. For these villages it might be a bit more different. Um, we can also think about um, these planes over here and, and think about maybe whether at some point we want to build a forward operating base here just to sort of defend against the Taliban here a bit better. Um, on the other hand, we could also try to build something up here. Um, so we have a nice little possibility to visit each of these uh, villages here uh, very swiftly, maybe. Yeah, maybe I think that's a very good idea. And up here, these guys, we could try to build up a road up here, but maybe it's even quicker and, and, and faster if we just do that by helicopter as well. Helicopters can be ambushed, however, and um, over here that would be also be a bit more challenging. So, let's uh, look at these units over here. We do have um, our standard unit, which is uh, just US infantry, so it has pretty good combat strength, however, um, it cannot really move very fast, um, only three action points, and it can't really see very fast, it only has a detectable range of two. However, it can uh, do a couple of useful things, in particular it can uh, visit villages and uh, gather intelligence, but from the main point of view it will mainly do that. It will gather intelligence and it will fight um, actual combat. These special forces over here, um, they actually are not that great at fighting. They're, they are considerably worse than the US infantry because they are, you know, smaller groups um, and not actually there for, for the main fighting. However, they can move very quickly and they can uh, view very far. So, this is rather good unit for, for scouting out uh, things. The second good um, thing that they can do is that they can uh, trade in a unit, so Afghan National Army units, which we will be needing more of later um, and, and more of that later. In terms of uh, transport, um, there are a couple of options. So you can use these MRAPs, so basic infantry transport, can move rather quickly, uh, will be moving on the road mainly, is somewhat uh, mine resistant but not entirely. It does have two hit points as, as all of these units except the supply truck. Um, but yeah, and so it, it's, an, it's an armored transport basically. The supply truck is an unarmored transport so it's uh, not ID resistant and it only has one hit point so it's very very squishy. Um, but it can also, besides moving infantry, it can also move artillery, supplies, fuel, ammunition um, and a number of other so it's even quicker on the road, um, but it's not really a combat vehicle, whereas this guy uh, really can uh, ditch out some combat. You can also use um, air transport, either with the Black Hawk or with the Chinook. Um, again, similar roads. The Black Hawk is somewhat slower, um, but a bit cheaper, both to, to buy and to move around, uh, whereas the Chinook can move a bit further. Uh, is more costly, however, to move around and to buy. Uh, but it also has a couple of other uses. In particular, it can uh, transport fuel, which the Black Hawk can't. Besides these guys, uh, we also have the Bob Flow, which is an engineering unit, so no fighting strength, um, but it can construct a couple of things, and that will be very useful. 
So we will be buying one of these guys as well. And we have the Husky, which is a mine clearing vehicle. Lastly, we have um, Apaches, which I never really use because they're not that strong. Um, however, maybe in a pinch we'll be using them later on. And how it is, uh, which actually have a great range, um, but are rather unflexible in their use. So, with this uh, in, in mind, I think uh, we can start uh, to plan ahead a bit. Um, and one thing that we want to do is uh, visit these villages. Now, when there's a fire burning in this village, um, you can that means you can um, gather some more intelligence from this village. Um, maybe a location of an IED around that, maybe a location of a militia, maybe, maybe some opium crops, uh, which would be which we would like to destroy because otherwise they'll be used by the Taliban for funding and thereby increasing further Taliban missions. So one thing is we want to make a little tour of these uh, three villages because you can see they all have these little fires burning. So it would make sense um, to get at least down here and, and visit them. Uh, the same actually over here. These guys uh, all want to visit, uh, visit. And I think this will be a particular fine uh, place for, for, for an operating base. It's rather easy to reach from our main base, um, so just a little hop down the road, um, but it can then go on and sort of supply and or visit these uh, four villages. So, the first couple of things that we will buy um, in, as, as our units is some infantry, so we can actually go ahead and visit these villages. Note that the costs are going down um, when we're buying more of these guys. We will also uh, want to buy mine clearing vehicles just to make sure that the roads are clear uh, we'll buy an MRAP just to get uh, uh, the one in between to the left and we'll buy a Black Hawk helicopter to move these guys down we will um, also want to have one of these engineering vehicles so we can start to build up our infrastructure a bit and uh, since we're added and, and since it's very very cheap we'll also buy a supply truck and some special forces. Let's actually directly buy two uh, special forces units uh, to make sure that we got everyone covered. So looking at that you can see we have a bit of a shortage of transports and um, two infantry, two special forces. Uh, to get anywhere these guys will need some, some form of transport. Uh, we only have one helicopter, one MRAP, the supply truck which we don't really want to use. Um, so let's also start and uh, get maybe a Chinook, uh, which is a bit more quicker. Okay, so I think we are all set to go um, and we could actually start. But I think that's it for the overview and we'll uh, start actually moving out our units in the next episode. Thank you.